let me emphasize this class and next few classes are super duper important because once you understand the basic mathematical concepts that are used to model either a fixed wing aircraft or a rotary wing aircraft or a multi rotor the fundamental equations are the same so what we would do in today's class is we will again go back step by step look at these equations we will look at how these equations are applicable in the case of a fixed wing aircraft how these equations can be modified in the case of quadcopter and at the end we will conclude today's lesson by running a very simple animation of the fixed wing and i will i'll tell you some hints on how to convert that animation into a quadcopter animation in next class we would take that animation and we would convert that animation into a simulation wherein the input for the animation would come from the differential equations of motion and then gradually we would go step by step further and then add controller and all that type of stuff and once the basic uh, building block we understand then we can move on to a full blown simulator so if you are on to canvas website there is a zip folder called animation so basically a rar folder please download that rar folder and expand this expand that folder into matlab and towards the end of the class i will show you how that fixed wing simulation is uh, or animation is done there is also a file for quadcopter simulation so if you run that file it will actually do a quadcopter trajectory and then we will talk about how to modify our simulation so that it can actually simulate a flying quadcopter so online students and in person students uh yeah so please download animation dot rar uh, file can you see that animation dot rar file there is a simulink folder i mean there is a simulink file there is an uh, uh, an m file and we will run those at the end of the class any questions before we begin full of announcements next tuesday's class would be on zoom next tuesday i am traveling so i would be doing a zoom class no class next thursday again i will put that in an announcement no class next thursday however next tuesday i would announce project 2 which would be based on the telo simulations so you would have about seven lab assignments or seven exercises that you have to complete using telo and i would give you about two weeks to finish also i have reached out to our industrial partners for some projects that are appropriate for the robotics to class so we would i would announce those projects for all you people out there that don't know this little so tip uh, When the funeral be announced in class, and you pull over, you pull over on the side of the road, you put this thing in park. Okay, you're gonna see all these vehicles down here. Depending upon there will be a delivery boat, and you would have another side of the tip that you're really gonna want to know is if a vehicle attempts to pass you, and there will be a lot of projects, so you can be waiting for the funeral procession to proceed. And you can work in the group of people. Work on it. Let motherfucker out. And then you can, you will have a certain delivery boat to work on. Y'all have a great day. Start respecting funerals. We're gonna start totaling shit. Will be announced. Quick Southern etiquette uh, for all you people. Okay. So far, we briefly looked at the quadcopter equations of motion, and those quadcopter equations of motion, in my personal opinion or in my humble opinion, were cryptic. Like they were described as just one-line vector equation. 
but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the very basic like f is equal to m a and p is equal to i alpha those types of equations and then derive in general equation of flying object i cannot emphasize this less the equations that we are going to derive are equations for flying object it could be a rock it could be a saucer it could be a plane it could be an uh, it could be a, a tail rotor it could be a helicopter it could be a multicopter so the equations that i'm going to discuss today that's why this topic is super duper important those equations are the equations for flying object that could be ufo same as long as it's flying in the earth atmosphere uh, at a reasonably low altitude the equations that we are going to derive the newton's equations will be valid so please pay attention on how these equations come about and then in the next class we would extend these equations to quadcopter and what is quadcopter simulation quadcopter simulation is nothing but the animation of quadcopter quadcopter simulation is the animation of quadcopter but the input to that animation is the solution of the differential equation that we have derived here so quadcopter animation is the visualization of the 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 results that we get from the differential equation in the last class i briefly talked about what are the different coordinate frames that we are studying so the most two most important frames that we should be looking at is the inertial coordinate frame or the zeroth frame and the body fixed frame which is the final frame for a, a flying object this fixed frame or inertial frame is earth center earth fixed we assume the earth is flat even though it's not flat we assume the earth is flat and then you have this north east down frame located at the center of that flat surface you also have another north east down frame that is attached at the cg of the aircraft word cg is super important so aircraft <laughs> cg is where the aircraft north east down frame is attached and you have this north east down frame which is earth center earth fixed and then you have north east down frame which is attached to the aircraft the aircraft frame is attached to the aircraft and it's going to rotate yeah uh, but, yeah, can you please tell matthew to mute okay no not you expecting um but okay can you hear me okay okay so now the important part here is understand these two frames there is north east down which is earth center earth fixed and north east down which is attached to aircraft and these two frames are related to each other by the yaw pitch and roll transformation so there are three transformations which is exactly same as the spherical rest so understand the nomenclature pn is the uh, position in the north pe position in the east cd is the position in down uvw are the velocities that are expressed in the the aircraft frame so fb is the aircraft frame so u v and w is the forward uh, sideward and downward velocity of the aircraft roll pitch and yaw those are the attitude angles with respect to the ground frame and pqr are the body angular rates 
so roll pitch and yaw are called inertial angles because those angles are with respect to the inertial frame uh, p q r those are the body rates so roll rate pitch rate and yaw rate and in last class we looked at this simple transformation wherein i want to relate the inertial velocities and please understand as far as the navigation problem is concerned if you are using gps inertial velocities are the velocities that you can calculate so inertial velocities are the velocities with respect to the fixed reference so you have pn dot pe dot and pd dot and that those can be related to the vehicle velocity u v w by that transformation that will convert those body velocities to inertial velocity and that is that transformation that we talked about everyone understood this so what do we know so imagine that you are flying an aircraft when you are flying an aircraft you do not know what is your ground speed you do not know what is your ground speed what you know is you know your air speed which means how fast or slow you are going with respect to air so basically you can estimate u you can estimate v and you can estimate w and you can find roll pitch and yaw and that can give you pn dot pv dot and pd dot so basically so you can have u v and w those are the aircraft velocities and pn dot pe dot and pd dot again they are the velocities of the aircraft with respect to the fixed ground frame everyone understood this one thing i want to clarify if the aircraft is in level flight if the aircraft is in level flight and its frame which is the the aircraft frame is aligned if the aircraft frame is aligned with the northeast down frame if the aircraft frame is aligned with the northeast down frame in that case then the forward velocity of the aircraft would be equal to the the ground velocity of the aircraft sideward velocity or side slip velocity of the aircraft will be equal to the sideways velocity and the downward velocity will be equal to the down velocity but if the aircraft is in any other angle roll pitch and yaw please understand that its u v and w will not be equal to the p n dot p d dot and p e dot everyone understood this that is super important whether it's a quadcopter whether it's a helicopter whether it's a ufo whether it's a blimp or a balloon these equations will remain the same these equations are not going to change so if someone ask you hey write me a simulation code for uh, some weird tilt rotor you will use the exact same equations because these equations are free from mass and inertia properties these equations are free from there is no mass in this equation there is no inertia properties there is no vehicle geometry so these are purely kinematic equations the second equation that is super duper important is if you recollect this is what we have seen i want to find out the inertial rates once again what are the inertial when i say inertial angles inertial angles means angles related to the inertial frame or the angles related to the zeroth frame and what are those angles roll pitch yaw inertial angles are roll pitch and yaw because they are associated with inertial reference frame inertial rates are roll rate pitch rate and yaw rate everyone understood this roll rate pitch rate and yaw rate those rates 
are expressed around zeroth frame which means the inertial rates and i will repeat this one once again p dot psi dot and theta dot these are the inertial rate those are the angular velocities about the zeroth axis remember in robotics one we did omega x omega y omega z in the zeroth frame is equal to the jacobian multiplied by the joint velocity joint angular velocity remember that that is the exact same equation done here so you have the the rate then you have the at the joint rate joint angles and the rotation matrix and finally what you have here is the jacobian that is going to give you the joint and a joint rates is p q r which is p q r are the 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 velocities angular <coughs> velocities about the roof the, the body aircraft frame that you relate to the the roll rate pitch rate and yaw rate everyone understood this this equation is valid whether you are considering the dynamics of um, unmanned aerial vehicle fixed wing flying wing or if you are looking at the helicopter or you are looking at the tilt rotor these two equations the kinematic equations would remain the same and if you really want to study the kinematic equations then they will take you into the domain of inertial navigation where you use sensors and find out the vehicle velocities and vehicle orientation now next thing which i want to talk about is <clears throat> these two equations the, there is one equation which is called as the velocity equation can you see the velocity north east down so those are the inertial velocities once again i repeat inertial velocities means velocities with respect to the fixed reference frame p dot theta dot psi dot those are inertial rates which are the angular rates around the fixed reference frame and what do we have on the right hand side uvw is the actual aircraft velocity in forward north east and down direction at in the aircraft reference frame or in aircraft frame body frame and pqr are the rates the aircraft roll pitch and yaw so what we have the instrumentation that is inside the aircraft the instrumentation that is inside the aircraft is going to give you u v and w and it's going to give you p q and r and the control tower that is going to need p n p e p d and is going to need roll pitch and yaw everyone understood this if you are flying what you know is from the instrumentation from the cluster from the flight panel you will get u v and w and you'll get p q and r and the the reference altitude reference system they call it a hars attitude heading reference system will give you the values of roll pitch and yaw and from those you will know your north velocity east velocity and down velocity with respect to inertial frame and the orient angular rates with respect to uh, angular rates in the inertial frame everyone understood this i repeat once again the problem is not done here a control tower needs to know how far you are with respect to its own location so what it means is these velocities pn dot pe dot and pd dot they need to be integrated numerically everyone understood this these velocities need to be integrated numerically how do you do numerical integration simple you know the instantaneous velocity you multiply that by the time step get the new value of velocity multiply that by the time step get new value of velocity multiply that by the time step everyone understood this 
So velocity time step, velocity time step, velocity time step, and add those together. That is how you would get the total displacement. And why is you have why do you have to repeat this every time step? Because the velocity may not remain constant. Velocity is changing at every time. Everyone understood this. This is a simple Euler integration. You can actually become uh, can try to be more accurate. So if you have the velocity before, you have the velocity after. You find the average velocity and multiplied by the time step. That becomes trapezoidal integration. If you want to make it even super super, uh, actually uh, you can use some sort of Runge Kutta or some type of integration scheme that would give you even better results. So the point being here, this is a differential equation that needs to be integrated numerically at every time step to find out the position in north, east and down and orientation, roll, pitch and yaw. Everyone understood this? We are not going to do that by hand. We are going to use MATLAB to do that integration. But that integration needs to be done. Depending upon what solver you use, you can use a simple Euler numerical solver, wherein velocity multiplied by time step plus velocity multiplied by time step. You can use trapezoidal integrator, velocity, velocity average, multiplied by time step, trapezoidal integrator, or you can use a Runge Kutta where you have the previous value multiplied next value and then you combine those values. Everyone understood this? These two equations are super duper important. And these equations would remain as is, no matter whatever is the shape of your flying object, whether it's a rectangular, circular, triangular, trapezoidal, whether it is made up with gold, silver, rock, or, or maybe uh, cast iron, those equations are not going to change. These are kinematic equations, mass, Moment of inertia does not come in this equations. Everyone understood this. This is super duper important because that is the crux for flight simulation and control. Let me tell you, I studied the flight control and simulation for fixed wing. I studied the flight control and simulation for rotary wing then for tilt rotor. And then at the end, I realized that all these different simulations, they have this common set of 12 equations. Once you master these 12 equations, you can write a simulator for any flying object. And, and uh, you'll believe me at the end of uh, next class, not now. All right, next part, which I'm gonna discuss, and I'm gonna spend some time discussing this because uh, some of you were not in robotics one and some of you may not have a good background on the vector calculus or vector differentiation. But what I want to tell you here is, okay, I'm gonna use uh, my uh, whiteboard Just bear with me. Because in last class, okay. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. So, Okay, so what I want to talk about, this is super duper important, so please pay attention. You have a vector, 
vector has two components it has the magnitude and it has the direction do you agree with me if i differentiate a vector what is the meaning of differentiation if i have a vector vector has two parts one part is magnitude other part is direction if i differentiate the vector means i have to differentiate the magnitude keep the direction as is plus i have to keep the magnitude but take the differentiation of the direction so and i will tell you what that means in just a second so this is very important differentiation of vector There's no question. There's no comment. Differentiation of vector. And once you understand this concept, believe you me. Once you understand this concept, you will actually understand what the the Newton's equation, force is equal to mass times acceleration, and T is equal to I alpha, which is actually the derivative of angular momentum is equal to external torques mean in three dimensions so differentiation of vector so i'm going to say a vector so so this vector this is o this is a so there is this vector oa and this vector oa has two parts where r is the distance and then i'm going to say that this i is the direction so i have this vector oa which can be written as r times i hat where i hat is the unit vector what does that mean it means if i travel by r units i go to point a and say if i travel by phi i i go to point b now please note this vector i is body fixed which means as that arm is rotating as that arm is rotating this i hat also rotates do you agree with me as this body is rotating i hat also rotates now i want to take the derivative of this vector the derivative of this vector is going to be dr by dt i plus r di by dt you agree with me and why do i have to take the derivative of the unit vector the reason i have to take the derivative of unit vector is because think about it that unit vector is not fixed that unit vector even though the unit vector magnitude is one the unit vector magnitude is one that i is changing in direction can you see which means i have the derivative of the scalar value and the derivative of the unit vector everyone understood this this is super important now what is the derivative of unit vector so dr by dt is r i plus now for that i want you to remember this is called as the circle of vectors i j k and i'm going to do this only once and you are always going to go in the clockwise direction derivative of a vector is omega cross vector so what i want to do is i want you to understand 
that this is I, this is J. So K is coming out of the board. So K is coming out. Do you agree with me? The K is coming out of the board. And my omega, if this guy is rotating like this, can you see this rotation is omega k? Curl your fingers in the direction of omega. As you can see, your thumb is coming out of the board, which means this omega is positive. Do you agree with me? So r, this is i dot, which is omega k. Why omega k? Because angular velocity is also a vector. Angular velocity has a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. And angular velocity has magnitude, 10, 15, 20, 30, so on. So omega k cross i. Are you with me? Yeah. So why is it conditional time? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. What? Okay. Now, what I need to do is this is i so r r dot i this is plus r omega k cross i so this is what you have to remember circle of vectors i cross j is k j cross k is equal to i k cross i is equal to j. Everyone understood? So if you are going in the clockwise direction, you have the positive quantity. But if you go j cross i, what you get? Minus k. i cross k minus j. And then k cross j minus i. Everyone understood this? No? So, can you see the circle of vectors? So, there are three vectors unit vector i, unit vector j, and unit vector k. You want to find out the cross product of i cross j. How would you find out the cross product of i cross j? Can you see you are going clockwise? i cross j, what do you get? k. j cross k, what do you get? i. K cross I, what do you get? J. Understood this? Is that as it is by this? Look at the circle of is vectors. Is, uh, right, right. That's, that's the right hand rule. That is the cross product using the right hand rule. No, no, I mean, that, that's not that, uh, it's, uh, so circle is, you have, circle is a quick way of finding out the cross product. You can do the cross product using the technique that you studied in EGR 217 wherein you write a matrix and find the determinant. But this is a quick way of finding the product. What is I cross K? I cross K, can you see that you are going counterclockwise? Not, you are not going clockwise. So I cross K is minus J. Can you see that? K cross J is minus I, and J cross I is minus K. That is how you would determine the cross product of two unit vectors. Everyone understood this? This is super important. Because in next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this uh, vector with a velocity term. And next part, I'm going to replace this vector uh, by the, the angular momentum. And then you get the Newton's equation in uh, three dimensions. So everyone understood? So what do I get? R omega k cross r is K cross I is J. Now, what does that mean? It means, this is very important, so please understand. There is a velocity, and please pay attention, there is a velocity R dot in the direction I. Can you see that? There is a velocity I, uh, R dot in the direction I. And there is a velocity r multiplied by omega which is in the j direction which is this r times omega are you with me so which means if you have 
uh, oh, the perfect example is mouse. If you have an object which is rotating, this object is going to go forward with the velocity r dot and it's going to go r times omega, omega r, which is perpendicular to the radius. Are you with me so far? This is the differentiation of vectors. Now, what I'm going to do is this equation I wrote in a scalar form. What would I, what do I mean by scalar form? Here, point A is on the x axis, or point A is on i axis. Do you agree with me? If that point A is at some other random position, it will have a component in i, it will have a component in j, it will have a component in k. Do you agree with me? Right now, this point A is located on i axis. That's why this equation is very simple. This equation can be extended in three dimensions. If you have, say, R x i, R y j, R z k, that is where that point is located. You can also do the exact same thing. And now you get uh, the equation in three dimension. Everyone understood this? Yes. Omega, omega will not change. This is super important. Omega will not change. I mean, in this particular problem, my omega is about k axis, right? In a three dimensional flying object, you can have an omega, which is about three axis. You can have a tumbling motion, right? You have a satellite that is tumbling. So that tumbling satellite would have some rotation about X, some rotation rate about Y, some rotation rate about Z, but same equation will be valid. Everyone understood this? Before I go any further, I want clarification. I just want to make sure everyone understood this differentiation, vector differentiation, because the quantities in Newtonian dynamics, the quantities in Newtonian dynamics, they are only two. Everything else is differentiation. The first quantity in Newtonian dynamics, force is equal to mass times acceleration is nothing but, force is equal to mass times acceleration is nothing but rate of change of linear momentum is equal to force. And actually, this is where, I don't know when I actually realized that, it was like enlightenment. So let me tell you, all Newtonian dynamics that we study boils down to a very simple, simple sentence. You have linear momentum and you have angular momentum. You have linear momentum and you have angular momentum. Momentum is a vector. Momentum is a vector. Momentum is, if you think about it, uh, it's like mass times the velocity. Remember the linear momentum. It's a vector. Mass is a scalar, velocity is a vector. So entire Newtonian dynamics can be described as rate of change of momentum is equal to either force or torque. Remember this. It's a three-dimensional Newtonian dynamics. Rate of change of linear momentum, rate of change of linear momentum is force. Rate of change of angular momentum is torque. Everyone understood this? Rate of change of linear momentum is force. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Where does it come from? Linear momentum is m times v. Rate of change of m times v. m is the constant. So you get rate of change of v, which is a, is equal to f. Everyone understood this? Rate of change of angular momentum is equal to torque. This is the most general statement. And now I want you to understand, and I want you to think about it, 
momentum is a vector quantity momentum is a vector quantity it has some magnitude and it has some direction as soon as we use this vector differential differentiation equation you are going to get three degree uh, the rigid body dynamic equation three equations in the linear coordinates and three equations in angular coordinates that's all there to it that's all and once you have these two equations once you have these two equations remember we had the first three kinematic equations for position remember we had the second set of three kinematic equations for orientation remember the sixth equation just i showed you right you have three equations for force rate of change of linear momentum is equal to force in x force in y force in z rate of change of angular momentum is torque about x torque about y torque about z that's it and you can simulate any flying object yeah question Summarize uh, only about di by dt. Di by dt. Like, uh, how do you, uh, how do you about omega k times i, right? How is it? Yeah. So omega k times. What is omega? Omega is the angular velocity. Angular velocity is a is a vector or a scalar yeah. vector. Angular velocity has the direction and it has magnitude. This particular rod is rotating counterclockwise. So can you see that I have shown omega like this? About which axis that omega is rotating? K axis. Tell me that K axis. Is it coming towards out outside out of the board or going inside the board? It's coming outside. Curl your fingers in the direction of omega. Your thumb is pointing towards positive K. Can you see? That's why it's omega K. Everyone understood this? Okay. My online students, I just want to make sure because once you understand this, things will become, uh, you will be enlightened. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And, and believe, believe it or not, this is the crux of multi-body dynamics. This is the crux of multi-body dynamics. Yeah. Professor, can you explain the mouse example? Mouse example. Yes, I would explain the mouse example. I just I don't want to explain it to you again because last time I explained it, I broke the mouse. So here is what happens. Okay. So imagine that this is the mass. It is at certain radius. And now what's going to happen is this is going to rotate. Imagine that this wire gets extended. So what is the velocity of the mouse? Let me tell you two stories. Velocity of the mouse when the rotation of the wire is prevented. When the rotation of wire is prevented, the velocity of the mouse is like this. Do you agree with me? That is R dot. Now, wait for a second rotation of the mouse is allowed but the translation of mouse is prevented so can you see that it's going to rotate like this so what would be the velocity it is omega r and now if you are going to allow the translation and rotation what would happen these two velocities would act simultaneously everyone understood this that's what it means now I mean, we can make this even more complex and then do the differentiation and derive the, the acceleration equations. But to be honest with you, if you understand only one key thing from your entire statics and dynamics, I mean, dynamics, this is the only thing that you should remember. Equation for vector differentiation means differentiation of the scalar quantity and differentiation of the direction. It's u times v rule, differentiation of the scalar quantity and the differentiation of the, the direction. And rate of change of linear momentum is force, rate of change of angular momentum is torque. Everyone understood this? 
so now this is the equation only thing here the difference is that omega i, I want you to think about it the first one the first one the first equation okay the first equation is pxi pyj pzk that is nothing but the coordinates of that point p differentiation with respect to inertial frame can you see that those p's are dotted and those i's j's and k's are also dotted are you with me so far now next thing what we are doing is we are actually re rewriting this equation as derivative of p and derivative of the unit vector so this equation becomes something like this can you see that you have that the important thing i want you to remember is d by dt of i is omega b i cross i derivative of j is omega b i times j derivative of k is omega b times i multiplied by k everyone understood this that is the exact omega cross equation that we talked about yeah where is i coming from oh the b times i which one i no, no. omega times i i b is the unit vector okay i'm going to rewrite this equation again because believe it or not this is a super super important equation p x i p y j p z k derivative of this guy derivative of this guy derivative of this guy plus derivative of this guy derivative of this guy derivative of this guy understood that so you have px dot i py dot j pz dot k plus px i dot py j dot plus p z k dot you agree with me now the question is i want to get rid of these i dot j dot and k dot what are those i dot j dot k dot i dot j dot k dot is omega cross i is i dot j dot and i am i'm i'm specific here here omega what i mean by omega there is a hat which means that's a vector omega cross j and k dot is omega cross j now you may ask me what is this omega <clears throat> is omega hat is the magnitude omega 5 radians 10 radians 16 radians and the axis about which that rotation is this could be like uh, everyone understood this what i mean by that is think about it like this this is i this is j this is k if omega is like this omega is like this this is omega x i do you agree with me but there is a possibility that that frame could be tumbling which means you could have omega y and omega z so this omega is omega x omega y j omega z k so what you will do is you will plug this guy in here and perform three cross product multiplications using the circle of vectors in real practice we are not going to do that in real practice matlab will perform all these calculations but it is absolutely clear that you understand that the final final equation is derivative of vector p is the derivative of magnitude 
plus angular velocity crossed with vector itself. Once again, I repeat, this is this is the fundamental equation. Derivative of vector is the derivative of the magnitude plus angular velocity crossed with the vector itself. This is the crux. Now, how does this <clears throat> get applied to translational dynamics, which means force is equal to mass time acceleration? Rate of change of linear momentum is equal to the external forces. What are the linear momenta? Linear momentum <clears throat> is mass times velocity. So I take the rate of change of mass times velocity is equal to external force. And in this particular case, mass is scalar. So it comes out of the bracket. Mass is scalar that comes out of bracket. So I want you to just look at the last equation, Vg, derivative of Vg with respect to time plus omega cross Vg. Have you understood this? Where your Vg is your vector. So derivative of Vg plus omega cross Vg. Yeah. In terms of acceleration or acceler acceleration axis or no. vector could be vector has three components so omega x omega y omega z so this omega b with respect to i could have three components omega about x omega about y omega about z and that f will also have three components so basically this equation when you expand this equation when you expand dollars to dollars pesos to pesos you cannot add omegas in i direction to omegas in z direction so when you separate out i's j's and k's this one line equation is going to give you three equations and those are these equations in the direction of acceleration same, same as velocity. We are, we are no acceleration is different. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Acceleration could be positive if the velocity is increasing. Acceleration could be negative if the velocity is decreasing. But what I'm trying to say here is that single equation, remember that we had on the top. Now I'm going to substitute those individual values. You have velocity in x direction, which is u, velocity in y direction, which is v. Velocity in z direction, which is w. You have angular rates about x, y, and z, p, q, r, and you have the forces fx, fy, fz. <coughs> when you plug all that in, what you have is you have this equation. And what does this equation tell you? Very interesting. Acceleration in the x direction is u dot. Remember, u is the velocity. Acceleration in the x direction is u dot. Acceleration is the y, the y direction is v dot. And acceleration in the z direction is w dot. Is equal to, can you see these product terms? R times v minus q times w, t times w minus r times u, q times u minus, those are sort of Coriolis effect. You have the velocity. And you have the angular velocity. Please recognize u, v, and w. U, v, and w are the translational velocity. P, q, r, those are angular velocity. So, can you see you have r times v, which is the product of angular velocity and a translational velocity? Everyone understood this? So, once you have this, out of 12 equations, you have mastered nine equations. So first six equations are equation for kinematics. Next three equations are the equations for translational dynamics, which is force is equal to mass times acceleration in three dimensions. And last three equations are the rotational dynamics. Uh, 
Uh, oh man, so can you see that PQR yeah. UVW? Yeah, I just need to understand the uh, math here. So we took a we took a cross there. That, that's what so okay. Let me hmm, let me try to explain. Are you clear with the first equation? Yeah, okay. yeah everything is now, yeah. And what you do is what is VG? VG is UVW, which is U is in I, G is in J, and W is in K. What is PQR? PQR is P I Q J and R K, right? So what you have is you have PQR cross with UVW. For that, you have to use circle of vectors. Okay. If you don't like circle of vectors, you can use I, J, K, P, Q, R, U, V, W. I am deriving this equation just, just for your own satisfaction. I, Q, W, minus V, R. Minus J P W minus U R plus K P G minus Q. Now C you have R V minus Q W. PW minus RU and PV minus QU. Only thing is my signs are flipped because of the, the sign convention of the cross product. That is the expansion of the first step. Yes. What about the meters per second square? No, yeah, yeah, meters per second square. So basically, angular rate. Okay. So you have meters per second, which is the velocity, which is u, right? Mm -hmm. Multiplying with radians per second square. Mm -hmm. That gives you meter per second square, which is the unit of acceleration. And this is the unit of linear acceleration. I don't know if you realize this, but this stuff is once you understand this, any flying vehicle dynamics will be super simple. There are only 12 fundamental equations. Those 12 fundamental equations govern all the flying dynamics. Okay. Any questions here? No questions? Online students, any question? Okay, now same mathematical jugglery, except the rule number two, rate of change of angular momentum is equal to torque. Linear momentum, rate of change of linear momentum is force. Rate of change of angular momentum, H is the angular momentum is equal to M or the torques. Everyone understood this? Any questions here? So can I go directly down to this vehicle, I mean uh, this equation, which is dh by dt, which is the derivative of the scalar value of angular momentum plus omega multiplied by the, the vector itself, crossed with vector itself, which is same as the previous one. Everyone understood this? So this is the same uh, development. Now, but here, the things become tricky. What happens? Mass, which is small m, whether it is considered x axis, y axis, or z axis, mass remains the same. But now what we have is the mass 
moment of inertia, which is r, which is mass times the radius of gyration square, that depends upon where the mass is located. For example, if the mass is located at the center of gravity, its radius of gyration is zero. If the mass is located far, far away, its radius is going to be huge. It depends upon where that mass is located with respect to the three dimensional axis that decides the moment of inertia. What is the moment of inertia? Please understand. Inertia means laziness. Moment of inertia means how lazy that object is to the moment. So, for example, if an object has a lot of moment of inertia, which means if I apply moment, that object will not rotate easily. So that means large moment of inertia. An example is if you have a quadcopter. Quadcopter has different moment of inertia in Z plane, north plane, I mean uh, north and x axis. So basically, in some uh, orientation, it has a lower moment of inertia. In some orientation, it has larger moment of inertia. So next thing is this angular uh, uh, angular momentum is given as moment of inertia j multiplied by the angular velocity and this j is nothing but the radius of gyration square multiplied by the mass value so basically you get this something called as the inertia tensor in robotics one we studied this but in robotics one, uh, we looked at the articulated robot. Those were cylindrical shape or rectangular shape. So they did not have very complex equations. But in the case of aerial robots, it's not possible directly to calculate those uh, equations. You have to use some type of a CAD model and find out moment of inertia about x axis, y axis, z axis, and the products of inertia. So next part is the same equation that we have been talking about dh by dt is equal to omega cross h is equal to m which is the derivative of the, the magnitude of the, the angular uh, momentum plus omega cross angular momentum and once you go through this math once you go through this math, just like the previous equation, you will land up with a very nice, a simple equation. And this equation is shown over here. And this equation is P dot, Q dot, R dot, which are the angular acceleration in X direction, angular acceleration in Y direction, angular acceleration in Z direction is nothing but you have the inertia matrix multiplied by the torques L, M, and N. L is the torque about X axis, M is the torque about Y axis, and N is the torque about Z axis. Everyone understood this? I, I would encourage you to go home and look at these equations and the, this math once again. Because all said and done, finally, no matter what the flying object is, no matter what the flying object is, whether it's a rock, whether it's a blimp, whether it's a balloon, whether it's a, a spaceship, or spaceship, we don't do space equations with this, but uh, any U, uh, UFO which is flying on Earth, these are the only 12 equations of motion what changes is very 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 important what would change depending on depending upon whether it's an aircraft depending whether it's a, a helicopter depending upon whether it's quadcopter the values of j will change can you see that jx jy jz because they will be vehicle specific everyone understood this fx fy and fz would change because 
the forces on the quadcopter are different than the forces on airplane. Forces on balloons are different than forces on helicopter. So Fx, Fy, and Fz would change. And L, M, and N would change. In the case of uh, quadcopter, remember the quadcopter torques are dependent on the thrust and the lever arm. So depending upon no, whatever aerial vehicle you have, your J values are going to be different. Your LMN values are going to be different. And your uh, uh, FX, FY, and FZ values are going to be different. And you can simulate any flying wheel. Any flying wheel. Please understand these equations. Remember, you have theta, psi, and phi. What are those? Euler angle. So these are the differential equations of motion using Euler angle. Everyone understood this? You can modify these equations to be expressed in Quaternions, but we'll get to that later. But at this point, what I want you to note is the equations that we have derived. Those are universal equations. Last equation, this? Ooh. Yeah, that equation is going to take some more time and effort. So the idea is you have the angular momentum vector. You differentiated the angular momentum vector just as linear momentum vector. What is angular momentum? Angular momentum is the equation. Angular momentum is given as mass uh, moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. Mass moment of inertia is axis specific. It is different about x axis, y axis, z axis, and the product of axis. So you got this inertia tensor multiplied by omega. You plug in those numbers and you expand step by step. And then finally, what you have is you get with this equation. In one step, uh, you have to actually invert the J matrix. That's what is shown over here. So my suggestion to you is go step by step to these steps and try to derive those equations. This math is correct. But at the end, what you're going to do is you're going to get this equation, T dot, Q dot, R dot, is equal to this guy. And what is this guy? This guy is nothing but um, mass, moment of inertia, the angular velocities, and torques, L, M, N, or torques. OK. And when that is done, I just have five minutes to walk you through the simulation. So please open MATLAB. Yeah? Torque is about the axis X, Y, and Z, the, but the torque is about body axis. So L, M, N is the body torque. You cannot apply inertial torque to the aircraft because aircraft is there, inertial axis is here. Okay. So now what I want you to do is I'm going to share my screen, open MATLAB. Ooh. Open MATLAB. Okay, I'll share this. Open MATLAB. Can you see my screen? And there is, you should see MAVSIM chapter 2 SLX. Open this. It will take some time. You should also open quad animation.m. Okay, so here, what you have, this is not a simulation, this is an animation. What is, what is happening? I'm supplying the values of north, east, down. I'm supplying the values of Pn, Pp, Pd. I'm supplying the values of U, V, and W. I'm supplying the values of Euler angle, P, theta, and psi. So P is roll. Theta is pit and psi is yaw. And then I'm supplying PQR, which are the angular velocities. And what this is doing, 
is it is taking those values and plotting the aircraft. So what I want you to do is I want you to double click on draw aircraft. And when you go to this draw aircraft, this draw aircraft is an interpreted MATLAB function. What is an interpreted MATLAB function? It is just the MATLAB code wrapped in the simulant uh, block. Interpreted MATLAB function. And how would you know this interpreted MATLAB function? This interpreted MATLAB function, can you see draw aircraft? There is a function called draw aircraft. So you can actually write a MATLAB function, create a simulant block, interpret a MATLAB function, and actually just use that MATLAB code inside the simulant. How does this work? And I would encourage you to take a look at this. PN, PE, PD are the values, velocities. And then actually there is this score that is plotting the aircraft. So this actually is plotting the aircraft. And the easiest way to do it is go back and run. Can you see? Now you have this aircraft. This is just the animation. What you can do is you can change. Change this. Can you see that aircraft is going forward? Aircraft is going backward. Can you see this aircraft is going left? Aircraft going right? Can you see aircraft going up? Aircraft going down? Same thing. Can you see aircraft rolling? Can you see aircraft pitching? Can you see aircraft yawing? Now, this is a very nice simulation. And what you can do is you can actually see what happens when there is a gimbal lock. So in gimbal lock, you can see that this angle becomes 90 degrees. Aircraft becomes 90 degrees. Can you see 90 degrees? And now see what happens. You do your. You do roll. Okay. So you basically lost a degree of freedom. So zero yaw. Actually, you should play with this and then actually it will make understanding super duper nice zero. So zero. So this actually shows you gimbal law. What happens in gimbal law? So basically, what happens is you lose control of one axis. Just just try. Now you try to change rule and try to change yaw. You will see nothing happens. So basically, you lost. One degree of freedom. Can you see? That's what happens in the gimbal lock process. Now, one thing I want to tell you is if you run this core simulation, core animation, run this code, this is the quadcopter animation. In this four quarter animation, what are the inputs? The inputs are PN, PD, uh, and PE, and roll, pitch, and yaw. So if you run this code, you can actually substitute the values of Z, Y, X, roll, pitch, yaw, and it will actually simulate the quad copter. So here is an exercise for me. I want you to take that aircraft simulation and replace that aircraft with a quad copter. Remember in the previous animation that I showed you, I had an aircraft. You see, here there is a quad copter. Take this quad copter 
and replace the aircraft and i'm going to stop here if you are not able to do it we will discuss that in next class